Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to allow me to share a, a personal journey of a serious workplace incident, and in my particular case, it was the loss of Ingrid Forshaw. Uh, Ravensworth, uh, we're in New South Wales, um, and through the period of 2012 through 2013, uh, we undertook a fairly extensive expansion. Uh, we'd grown our workforce from just over 100, uh, 100 people to well over 800. And in that rapid transformation, um, you have things that go wrong. Uh, you have incidents, um, you have a lot of new equipment, and there's a lot of excitement there about the growth and the opportunities that's in front of you. Uh, during that period of growth, as I say, we had a number of incidents. Um, we, we did experience a number of near misses, and each time we did, we'd stop the workforce, uh, we'd engage with them, um, we'd have consultation discussions, and we'd look at ways of what we can do different to improve. And there was a considered effort focusing on our systems and what we needed to change as the, as the operation grew bigger. New, numerous initiatives and programs focused around improvement. Uh, they targeted cultural uh, shortcomings and focusing on individual behaviours. And whilst there were a number of minor recordable injuries, um, the trend was declining. Uh, so we were seeing opportunities, we were seeing what we thought were the positive indicators heading in the right direction. And there's a general sense of optimism that we're improving as the site progressed. On Saturday 30th of November 2013, a light vehicle en route to a crib hut uh, collided with a dump truck. Uh, the sole occupant, Ingrid Forshaw, was killed. Ingrid was 38 years of age. She had a background in logistics and she travelled extensively. And she had nine months' experience on our site. She took the opportunity because it brought her close to her family. On her crew, Ingrid's partner, her brother-in-law, and many friends that she had. Their lives and the lives of many others changed that night. So the night of the incident, I received a phone call from the mine manager. It was just before midnight. He described the incident and what had been described to him. I was completely numb. It didn't make any sense. I arrived on site at about 12.30 where the workforce had been assembled, mu mustered together in one of our pre-start rooms. There was approximately 100 people, their faces strained, emotional, neither grasping what had just occurred to them on their shift. I met with the supervisors, the employees that had rendered assistance, pure shock. I met with the truck driver involved. He was shattered. Incomprehensible pain, the disbelief of what had occurred. I assembled the incident response team, support networks to grasp the situation and establish some form of control in something which felt so unreal. The regulated groups mobilised, meetings with the inspectorate, the investigations group. We tried to establish processes, everyone searching for answers, everyone wanting to know how this occurred. Answers that would only take time. Inspection of the scene, internally trying to understand how this incident occurred, the emotion associated with just knowing just hours before this was a normal workplace that had changed. Helplessness, people wanting to do something, hoping to change something, knowing there was nothing that could be done to change. Communication with the workforce, the regular briefings, updates, general support, managing grief, trying to triage those amongst our workforce that feel it. The establishment of EAP support, being available to counsel, to share, to be open. As people, we rely on routine, structure, control of our day-to-day -day lives. In the events immediately preceding, your world is chaos. And as leaders, it is critical that we establish structure. We establish some form of normality, and most importantly, humanity. Allowing people to grieve individually, collectively, and that we support each other throughout this process. 
We're nearly five years since we lost Ingrid. And there's not a day where I don't think about it. And there are three key areas that I'd like to reflect on and share with those amongst you. Those that have statutory functions, those that provide leadership and guidance, and those of us that provide support in those difficult circumstances. And firstly, it's organisational. A robust crisis incident management system is paramount. When confronted with a loss of control, structure is your guide. Test your system. We all have a role to play. Ensure that you are best prepared. Test your system. Training, your first response is key. Validate people's understanding. As I say, everyone has a role to play. We all have a part to play. Your support ne network, your senior leaders in your business, your guidance is invaluable. When you're in the trenches and you're going through this moment, you need the people around you, the support, the ones that can look up and above and look at the horizon. Legal, the process is complex. Sound legal advice is critical. Managing an investigation, the legal support, the relationship that you form with that group is, is critical. And it's important to know that this process goes for some time and the people that are directly involved are going to go this, through this process for many years. And each time there's a new notice come in, they'll be asked to reflect, to review, to respond. Through ours, we had over 50 notices, over 700 individual requests for information. Day after day, people were getting drawn back through it. So a number of our people were continuing to relive the incident day by day. And no matter how many times you feel frustrated, drained, bashed through this process, the greatest advice of all I can offer is think of Ingrid, think of her family. The specialist resources, enlisting those with the appropriate skills. Your Minds Rescue, your EAP, they're vital in any case of uh, distress. Secondly, the stakeholders, internal and external, they all have jobs to do. People are involved, and for all, we need to retain some level of understanding and empathy. Media, social commentary, things are going to be said, things are going to be written about, things are going to be presumed about what actually occurred. It's important that we relay the facts. That's what's important. And finally, people. In times of crisis, people react differently. Be mindful, we all grieve differently. And a key learning is your alpha, your more dominating characters. They're not necessarily your most strongest. The most unlikely exhibit the greatest strength of all. Serious incidents cause triggers. Recognise the signs, refer for assistance. And managing grief, the general wellbeing of our workforces, that's what's most important provide the support, establish the routines, and monitor. Following the incident, there's at least 10 employees that have left our industry. The triggers, previous events in their own lives have caused these, the emotional scars, and a significant group still remain deeply affected and continue on in our industry. Leadership, strength to continue, strength to lead, strength to be resilient, strength to share, Serious incidents involve people. That's the most important thing to always remember. The effects on your family, your children, and those that are part of the uncertainty of investigation. Don't lose sight of what's important to you. Everyone feels your journey. When, if a serious incident occurs, always remember people are what are most important. Safety can be seen as something I have to do. If I don't, I could get in trouble. I could lose my job. It's not. It should be something that every person values. Because if something goes wrong, it impacts upon everything that's important to each and every one of us. It's about our futures, our families, and it's personal. In late 2016, uh, three years since the fatality, the site developed a video which was to highlight safety to our workforce 
And as the video developed and the discussions occurred, it was quite clear uh, that our site was still struggling to move on from the effects of the fatality. The following brief extracts are taken from that video, and I'd like to thank the people from Ravensworth that contributed uh, to the production of it. This is only possible through sharing their stories. I hope the messages resonate with you all today. Thank you. You don't get many chances in the mining game, and when things go pear-shaped, they go pear-shaped pretty quickly. So you need to be vigilant, make the right decisions, come to work in a, in a good frame of mind, and, and then go home in the same way. I sustained a substantial amount of injuries. Um, I had five breaks in the pelvis and two in the right hip. I could not only feel the breaks, but I could hear them break over the noise of the shearer. I knew I was in big trouble. I had flashbacks of dad being killed in the mine, and I thought, don't tell me this is the way that I'm gonna go as well. I just thought of dad and, and my wife, and I've, I've got five children, and you know, I just didn't know if I was ever gonna see them again. People don't think it could happen to them. Um, that's just a, you know, normal human behaviour that it couldn't happen to me. Um, but the reality is that it does, and um, the ripple effect that that has for someone, I don't think anybody can really have any idea of that until they're actually they have to go through it. That mentality of it's not going to happen to me it shouldn't be a mentality that's in any sort of work site. Procedures there for a reason. Shortcuts are called shortcuts for a reason. It's a quicker way to do something, but it's the wrong way. It might get you to that point quicker, but it may get to the hospital quicker as well. I stepped in the front of a roof support that looked to be forward, it went to go again to move forward. Um, as I did that, it caught my, um, my gum boot by about four or five mil and pulled the steel cap through, crushing my big toe, second toe and third toe. I was lucky enough to hit the emergency stop button, which shut everything on the long wall down. If I didn't reach that stop button, it would have at least taken my legs, if not my life. They couldn't save my big toe and they couldn't save my second toe. Um, I lost the tip of my third toe. I went back to work after about five months. And then every night I'd work, I, every, every night I'd go to sleep after work, I'd be having nightmares. I'd wake up after a nightmare and then have to go to work and then have to go live that. The long lasting effects are definitely the mental, the cognitive, the psychological impairment. I would refer back to the fatality that occurred at Ravensworth and the impact that that had on our workforce was incredible and I had never experienced anything like that and I hope not to again. That event has left a lasting impression on me. I know it still affects everyone on our crew. It's going to stick with them forever. It's never going to leave them and we've got to move on and make sure it doesn't happen again. I wouldn't want to walk out of this mine site knowing that I'd done something wrong and it caused a death. Whenever I hear an ambulance, a siren, I think, oh, I really hope that's not going out to Ravensworth because someone's life is about to change. On the 30th of November, 2013, my life and many of the lives of our workforce changed forever. An incident where a much loved and valued employee lost their life through an unfortunate workplace accident. When you receive a phone call to advise you that a serious incident has occurred, it brings it all home. The feeling of loss, sorrow, anger and emptiness surrounds us all. Attending the site, seeing the incident, the expressions within the workforce, the shock, the horror, the trauma, the feeling of helplessness is something I pray all of us may never have to confront again. The incident and its effects do not leave after a day, a week, a month, a year after the event. The impacts 
and the effects continue for many for a long, long time. And some will never escape the effects. Safety starts with each of us. Look after yourself, look after your workmates, and importantly, remember that safety is not about protecting us from something, it's about protecting us for something. Thank you.